This video is sponsored by our fine friends over at Hackster.io. If you want to see more projects like this, then head over to their website and browse through their thousands of different projects and topics. Why, hello there, Tinker Nerds. Random fact. The first navigational satellite had a two mile margin of error. GPS is for sissies. Before GPS, there were maps. Good old trusty maps. Maps that no one knows how to read anymore. But you know what? Maps are for sissies too. You know how I navigate from one place to another? the stars. And during the day it's even easier because there's only one star that's visible. But sadly that blasted day star doesn't stay still. All kidding aside, GPS has almost become a staple for helping people get from one place to another. And although anyone with a smartphone already has it and probably uses it daily, I thought it'd be nice if our smart car had its own dedicated GPS feature. If you don't know the smart car I'm talking about and haven't seen any of my previous videos, you can catch up at the project page at this link or you can find somewhere in the video description the link to the playlist to watch all the previous videos. Okay, let's figure this out. So a GPS system is primarily composed of two parts. The GPS module that communicates with the satellite to get coordinates and a mapping system that overlays those coordinates on a map. Now most of the mobile mapping systems like Google Maps or Apple Maps require an internet connection so that they can download the maps for your phone. But if possible, I'd like to avoid that so that I don't have to rely upon an internet connection because giving an internet connection to the Pi generally would require an extra expense and that's something I don't want to pay. So for the GPS dongle, you can either go with a USB powered one or one that connects to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. And depending on which one you go for, you can get them for around $10 to $40. And they're both fine solutions, just make sure the one that you purchase works with your Raspberry Pi. Since I already had a USB one, that's the one I'm going to go with. As for the software, finding one that worked offline and with the Raspberry Pi proved to be pretty difficult. Pretty much the only options available were either a program called Nabbit or to make my own system from scratch. Since making my own would take several months of dedicated coding, I decided to give Nabbit a try. So opening up a terminal on the Pi, I installed Navit and eSpeak, which enables voice feedback for Navit if that's something you want. I made a directory for its XML settings and then copied the default settings into this directory. Launching it for the first time, nothing. After poking around online, I made a lot of suggested XML tweaks such as which maps to use, default country, and more that you can find on the project page. Then I saved it and launched it again. Still nothing. Then I realized that it probably doesn't have the right maps from my location, which makes sense. I need to download them. The nice thing about Navit is that you can use well-documented maps from OpenStreetMap.org. And you can download those maps for offline use by going to this website and selecting your area of interest, and then just download it to the Pi. Move it to a different location for all of your maps, and then add it to the Navit XML file. All right, we should now be good. So let's fire it up again, and still nothing. After more Googling, I found that it is showing something. It's just showing a location that doesn't have any roads or any other features. So that means it's not pulling any information from my GPS module. And even though the Navit software should have all the libraries necessary to detect the GPS module, I went ahead and installed a few more. Running this little test script, it confirms that the GPS isn't pulling data. It may be different for you, but what I had to do was edit the GPS INET script and manually point it to the USB device instead of auto-detecting it. Now running the script again, it started pulling data, so I had to hide my location. This time when I run Navit, it pulls the GPS data and plots me on the map. Now Navit has its own little interface, so you can adjust the settings, pull up navigation directions, and add new locations and other cool stuff. And although I didn't do it here, you can edit the XML file to make the interface a lot more user friendly. I'll see if I can post a sample XML file on my project page. The only problem with this is that it's a standalone program. So it's gonna be difficult to integrate it into our current ongoing project. So if you have any suggestions for alternatives or ways to integrate it, let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. 
You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.